Well, since everyone's doing it, I guess I should too. Hi everyone and welcome to Drive, your source for automotive reviews, analysis, maintenance, and restorations. Please subscribe to our channel, watch the entire video, watch our other videos, and of course, click on notifications to be first to learn about new ones. I'm Chris Capradoni, and in this how-to video, I will explain camber, the types of camber, pros and cons of camber, and how to measure and adjust camber. There are three types of camber, neutral, positive, and negative. Neutral camber is where the wheels sit exactly 90 degrees with the ground. This will maximize tire life, but does nothing to improve handling. Positive camber is where the wheels are angled in at the ground as viewed from the front or rear of the vehicle. This is not a desirable camber setting for any vehicle. Finally, negative camber is where the wheels are angled out at the ground. If done correctly, this greatly increases handling and lateral acceleration. Let's get over to the vehicle and demonstrate camber. Hi everyone. From time to time, I like to check the camber angle of my vehicles, especially if I've done any work um, to the suspension or anything uh, attached to the suspension. So even as, as minor as brake work, uh, this car had its rear bearings replaced. So there was a lot of pulling pieces off and putting them back on again. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to be checking the camber angle. I know what the factory set is for optimal performance. <clears throat> for this BMW X5, it should be a negative camber of between negative 1.7 to 2. Anything over 2 would create uh, excessive tire wear and, and your tires would wear out much quicker. Anything under negative 1.5 would create a performance issue in the sense that it would not inhibit understeer and that would be deemed to be um, not appropriate for a, for a BMW vehicle. So what I've done is this is a camber adjusting tool. I, I've calibrated it to be zero. And what you do, the best easiest way to do it is to park the vehicle, especially the axle that you're going to be testing on level ground. This concrete pad is level. So what you do is you just get a bar and you put it uh, up against both sides of the tire, and then you put the tool against it. And then you let the little air bubble settle where it should, where it will end up. This one is around just shy of negative two, which means it's within tolerance specs of what BMW expects it to be. So I won't be doing any sort of an adjustment to it. I checked the other side and the other side is roughly the same, 1.7, 1.8 in, in there. Um, so that means I don't have to adjust the camber, it's set properly, but I will show you what you need to do if you want to reset your camber or make an adjustment outside of factory spec, meaning more than negative two. And I'll show you exactly where on the suspension swing arm uh, you need to go in order to do this. So if you need or want to adjust the camber angle on the rear wheels, what you need to do is the first step is to lift the wheel off the ground so that it's not touching the ground. And then this here is the lower swing arm. And right here is the eccentric bolt. And then there's right behind it what's called an eccentric flat washer. Now that washer has an offset hole so it's oblong, it's not circular. And what that does is it allows you to push in or push or pull in, push out or pull in the camber angle for the swing arm. So in order to do it, what you need to do is loosen this bolt and actually take it off. Um, use a box wrench on the other side. I think that's 18 millimeter and I think this is 21, this bolt here is 21 or 24 millimeter, I don't recall. So you remove this bolt and then you use the bo open box wrench on the other side and you turn it either clockwise or counterclockwise in order to make the, um, the flat washer make the suspension move that way 
or this way. And you'll see it visually as you're rotating the bolt. Then what you do is tighten it, uh, put the bolt back on and, and tighten it hand tight. Lower the vehicle till the tire is touching the ground and go and measure the camber angle. If it's where you want, then what you do is you come back and you tighten this down. Um, I think this is, I forget the torque spec on it, but I'll find out and I'll, I'll print it on the screen. If not, what you do is you relift the, um, the wheel off the ground and make, and continue to do fine adjustments to that, um, eccentric flat washer until you do get the camber that you want. Then once you do, then you tighten the bolt down to torque and that's pretty much uh, the process. And then on the opposite side, you can do the same thing as well. Try and keep the camber angles the same, even if you are going out of spec, like say for example, you want a camber angle of two, a negative 2.5, make sure the other side is the same as well. And that's pretty much it. It's a very simple process. Most other vehicles are similar to this, where the eccentric bolt is located um, closest to the differential. Thanks everyone for watching this tutorial on how to check or adjust the rear wheel camber on a vehicle, specifically a BMW X5. Negative camber is required for optimal handling, but excessive negative camber only marginally improves handling, but dramatically increases tire wear on the inner tread pattern. Research your vehicle's optimal camber spec and set it within that optimal range. If you upgrade any suspension components, contact the manufacturer for camber angle adjustment recommendations. Ensure the vehicle is lifted and secured properly if you lift the rear wheels. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, like the video, and select the notification option. Drive, your source for automotive reviews, analysis, maintenance, and restorations.